It was a day in 1974, 8.45 in the morning, and Dave Lewis sat behind the wheel of his taxi, patiently waiting at the Forest Road school crossing. Dave's passenger, who was his fare, was getting agitated. Can't you blow your horn to move the old fool? I'm going to miss my train, said his passenger. Dave looked at him with horror. You must be joking, mate. That's not just a lollipop, man. That's grumps. Feared by every taxi and bus driver in the town. I've known bus drivers change their route just to avoid him. How are you then, Glenn? Oh, all right, all right. I've been laying blocks all day, so... Bill, oh, sorry, that's my phone going. Yeah, Bill's like I've been pushed down the stairs about four times at the minute, but I'm all right. So where are you? Um, just outside, a well, little place called Syston, just outside Leicester, where, where we used to live before we leave to move to deepest Lincolnshire. Oh, I see. All right. So you, you you were telling me earlier, or just this last second, you, you're at your daughter's house and she's getting some DIY work done. Well, it's more like major improvements from DIY. Oh, it's more, because DIY is actually do it yourself, because I was going to wonder why you didn't ask her to do it herself. Because um, <laughs> it turns out that you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get roped into that then? Because didn't you do loads of uh, plasterboarding and plastering for her as well? Oh, yeah, that was on a previous time, yeah, yeah. That was a different job. That wasn't this one. Oh, oh, oh no, no, this is... Um, well, we, we, we started this 12 months ago. Then yeah. We, we got it all out the ground and the floors and the most of the walls up and then... The bad weather came about September, so we just knocked it on the head and then started again about, well, I don't know, probably about a month ago, off and on. And what is it you're actually doing at the uh, moment? But, well, building an extension right across the back and down the side. It's, well, it's not an extension, it's another house stuck on the house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're getting there. But you're a best selling author. You shouldn't be risking your delicate hands on stuff like this. They won't be able to get on the keyboards and work the magic properly. The risk that they, that she's taking here, haven't you, on this job? I hope she realises. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, well, let's talk. Let's <laughs> let's talk about Grumps because this is a terrific book. It's all about a lollipop man who basically takes no prisoners. He, uh, he, he, he has a very clearly defined vision of how the world should be, but unfortunately he doesn't live in that world, and so he continues to do his little bit to make it more like the way it should be. Tell us about Grumps then, Glenn. Well, it was, I suppose my dad gave me the inspiration for him years ago because he could be a bit of a grumpy fucker, but <laughs> uh, he also had a wicked sense of humour, which right. he, which comes across in the book. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I, I can't quite think what, um, I can't quite think what, what, what gave me the character in the end. I thought, you can't, you can't have somebody that's just a complete, grumpy old nasty nightmare he's got to have some kind of redeeming character so although i oh know lollipop man yeah loves kids but everybody else <laughs> <laughs> it just developed from there really yeah okay and so once you've got the character what about the situations that you put him in i mean you start off by defining him quite well he is actually at the beginning of the book He's actually, he's on crossing duty, isn't he? And you get a pretty good idea yeah. straight away there why why he's like he is and and yeah. what he's like, yeah. But what about the other yeah. situations that he finds himself in? Basically, on his way home, isn't it? He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to go far for him to, he's not looking for trouble. It just seems to find him. Yeah, it's just, just on his path. He's... Uh... He's very much an opportunist, so any, anything that comes comes his way, he will take full advantage of it. But he's yeah. not not in any way maliciously, but he's just got no. a bit of a, a bit of a wicked sense of humour. 
He's very old school, uh, isn't he, with him being ex-military as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a very uh, strong sense of what, what's right and how um, how things should be done. And, you know, it's not, it's not like that in my day, type young man. I think what's quite so, clever as well is, is that this is a period piece too, isn't it? Well, it, it yeah, I, I, I wanted it. I wanted it to be set. Well, I, I've set it in the seventies because some of the characters were people, uh, people I've known, people I've worked with. Um, so that, that they, I wanted it to reflect that sort of time, but I didn't. I didn't want um, it had to be prior to all the mobile phones and internet and. All the all the stuff we take for granted now. It got to be more old school. Yeah, but all, also, um, I, I, I mentioned it to me to to Rob, my brother, um, who, who tends to sort of is my first port of call for what do you think to this, what do you think to that, and uh, and he he said because it, it was it was just a lollipop man to start with. I said, well, most of them now they're, they're all they've all got. Ivy's yellow reflective coat. So I thought, oh yeah, well that, that's not going to because I've got him in a old school white coat how they were when I was a kid. Yeah. So like, oh, well, I've got to I've got to qualify that then. So hence the set in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. The other so, good thing as well because you know I went to school in the nineteen seventies and people of the character's age, most of them had done their national service. So it's like you had a whole generation that was ex-military. It wasn't, was today it's more unusual to find someone who's yeah. ex-military. But back then you could yeah. pretty much guarantee that your lollipop man was ex-military of some description. So I thought that yeah. was very, very clever to set it in the 1970s like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, and what well, about that, the that other was... characters? Sorry, what was that? Oh, sorry. Well, that, that, was, that was part of the reasoning how... Uh, I wanted all the other characters to become involved, and how 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 their characters developed. Well, you know what what made them how they are in the story. Yeah, so it, it was it was quite important. I think if I if in in a in a today's sense, it, it it wouldn't. I don't think it would have worked, or certainly not as well. Yeah, 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 and and the. Um... The, the scene in the pub where he, he takes on some, some young fellas who are a bit big for the boots and he decides to take them down a peg or two. It mightn't have worked maybe in a modern pub where you're allowed kids and there's people go for a <laughs> meal and stuff. You know, it's, it's a darts yeah. match. You know, I'm sure there are pubs where they still have, you know, darts matches and, you know, it's a bit still like yeah. they used to be. But it, it, took it, back, it took it back to me. Um the local pub where my dad used to go, it was in the public bar, was a lot like that kind of atmosphere. Public bar back oh, then, you'd very, very oh, unusual yeah. to see women in a public bar in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. um, no, but yeah, uh, yeah, but now now pubs have changed, haven't they? Yeah, no, it it it, um, it, it, it was depicted as a you know a, prop, a proper man's bar. You know, yes, uh, yeah. Talk about man's things and play darts and yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the sawdust on the floor is last night's furniture, and that kind. Of, we're not quite that bad, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what about the other characters then? Where where did they come from? You say these are people you worked with. Yeah, the people. Well, because um, you were a uh, truck driver, weren't you? Well, in my, in my in my later years, uh, in the in the seventies, where. Um, some some of the, some of the characters um, came from was was well back in the seventies when I I was actually a copper at Worthing. Right. Okay. Um, so you'd see every section the, of life. Oh yeah, Ger Gerald Macy. <clears throat> he he was actually um, a delicatessen, old, old school um, gro grocer on on my patch. He used to go in there for a cup of tea, one of the tea spots. And, and and Gerald would wear the white coat, and it, it was a proper old school shop. So that's that's that that that's where that sort of scenario came from. And a lot of a lot of these characters come from 
past experiences, pe people I've known, people I've worked with. Um, like Char Charlie Randall, who appears in some of the other books, he, he was an actual person. Yeah. Uh, he, he was actually my section sergeant at Worthing. Lovely bloke. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he, he, he features in a few stories. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, pe people, um, not necessarily the, the, the full character as they're depicted in the book, but you get you, you, they give you the inspiration and the idea. Yeah. Um, and I, I do I do nick people's names and friends, relatives, like yours. <laughs> <laughs> you're, in, you're you're in one of the uh, next books to come up. Oh, am I? Yeah. I hope I come out oh, all yeah. right in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, in fact, you're you're a copper in uh, in Fartman. Oh wow, that's quite. Which which copper am I? Because I've I've already. I've looked at the manuscript of at Fartman and looked at the uh, the characters. Which one am I then? You're 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 Graham. Graham oh, of course. Graham. That wasn't a coincidence then, really. Oh, All right. No, 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 that was deliberate. Because you think, oh, who can this be? Oh, well, I'm that could be Graham. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I do get. I do get a lot of the characters' names from from, from that. Lots of friends, relatives, and. Uh, pe people I've known. So, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you think, oh yeah, um, <laughs> he, he 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 could he could be he could be this character. So yes, we'll nick him. <laughs> and how does it work then, Glenn? Do you come up with the characters first and then write the story around them, or do you write the story and then come up with the characters to fit in with the story? Uh, a bit, a bit of both. But like, um, Grump, Grump, Grumps was the main, the main backbone of the story. So he was the start uh, of it. You had, you had his character yeah. first, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, you, 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 you have ideas of of how you want it to develop, um, and ideas will just come to me as as as, as, as I write it. Um, and then there are other people you think, oh, well. so, so, sometimes um, it, it, it's not just the name, it's the actual person, although perhaps not an exact um, rip off of the, of the, of the person, but, but just elements of their character. And you think, oh, yeah, I could, I could, I could use, he used to say this, and that was one of his expressions. So, yeah, I can, I can use, I can use that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, th things tend to develop like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the time, um, I don't know. I don't know how the story is going to evolve. Yeah, you have you have the odd the odd idea and that, and often often I'll think of the ending almost as soon as I've written the book. Yeah, and, and then you sort of you you work your way through all these little bits, and some of the, some of the things. In, in grumps like the uh, uh, like bits in the pub and that it would just perhaps be something I saw forty years ago or yeah. something somebody said. You think, oh yeah, I can't remember. That. <laughs> you, can, you can use that and weave that into a story. Yeah, and that's generally how it works. Yeah, wow, he's such a great character, and I I'm not so sure that people these days, older people, senior citizens these days, are as outspoken as they used to be in the 70s. Uh, I think, you know, they used to... I can remember uh, going into school. I forget why. We went up to the school for something. I can't remember with my mother. She, it wasn't something I'd done wrong, but we were at the school and I was about... I don't know, it was primary school, so I wouldn't have even been 11. And I walked across, across the sports hall to get somewhere. And the caretaker... The caretaker who has no, uh, no business commenting on on anything other than something to do with you know caretaking, and he went pick your feet up. It's like, <laughs> but I don't think older people do that anymore. They don't boss kids around like it just used to be because they were older. They would boss kids around. You know, you would be expected to take someone if your mother met you, um, somebody else. She'd expect you to take the other woman shopping. You know what I mean, and carry yeah. it. You know what I mean. It was like that. That's not. 
that doesn't happen so much so much anymore, does it? Well, kids get driven everywhere now. But uh, so so the yeah. the seventies. So I was wondering when I was doing Grumps because the, the we did the Santa book, didn't we? And then we did yeah. um, what was the one we did yeah. after Santa? Trevor the Tractor. Now they were both definitely children's books, you know. Um, yeah. Is Grumps a children's book? Because I just think it's a comedy book. But is it officially a children's book? Well, uh, well, I think probably late teenager upwards. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was never intended. It was never intended to be, a, you know, a children's book, as I say. But, I see. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was just this idea. I, I thought. He's too brilliant a character. I've got to, I've, you know, I've got to, got to use this. Yeah. But there were the, the, the elements in there, like this, the, 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 the snuff scenario. Yes. That, that's a joke I heard probably, or I was told, blimey, forty years ago at least. That was an actual was, joke that did the rounds, yeah. was it? And you've turned it yeah. into a sketch, in effect. In, in the, I don't want to give yeah. the story away of what happens with the snuff, but it is quite funny. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, uh, going back to character Siberia, yeah, she she was a actual person. Really? Oh, where yeah. did you that, where did you know Siberia? Uh, well, she's probably she. I mean, bless her, she's probably died years ago now. So I can say she she used to be the uh, telephonist at the Nick. Right. And, uh, uh, she's very very much the character portrayed. And that is when I, when I first when I first went to Worthing, they're the saying that the, there was all different people with different nicknames, and uh, somebody mentioned oh that, that's Siberia, <laughs> or, it, or it, it, it mentioned Siberia in some context, whatever the conversation was. I said, oh, why do you call her Siberia? He says because everybody knows where she lives, but nobody wants to go there. <laughs> And it's just, you know, little things like this stick in your mind. You think that's the, yeah, that's good. I can use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is good. And what has the reaction been like to the book? Um, yeah, generally, yeah, very, very, yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, yeah. And it's the third. I mentioned we've done a couple of other books. So this is the third audio book we've done together. We're working on a fourth at the moment. Yeah. Um. How did you find the process of turning this one into an audio book? Um, um, yeah, quite yeah, quite easy this time. Yeah, we, 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 I'm starting to learn how you work. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. Mate, it, you know, it makes it a lot easier because yeah. I, I can um, I, I, I can say to you, "Oh, this doesn't quite work," or "That doesn't quite work." And I, I don't, I don't feel embarrassed or guilty saying, <laughs> no, we need to change this or we need to change that. But uh, no, yeah, yeah with any, working. with any luck, the audio book and of course the real book will be around long after we're both gone, and we leave it behind. <laughs> so you've got to, it. So it's got to be perfect. That's what I always think. It's got to be. Yeah. You don't want to like be regretting it or saying, I've only had done that. I should have mm. told him that. That's not how you pronounce that. Um, yeah. You know, I'd rather it be right. You know, and. Uh, and it, and it and it goes on because it becomes a part of history. We don't know with audio books, you know, how people will consume them because if, if you said twenty years ago, people will be downloading books from the internet that you listen to. I mean, back then, I think oh. the closest we had was book on tape, wasn't it? But that, that's what this has <laughs> now become. But yeah. downloading it, downloading books from the internet that you listen to—that's yeah. like, yeah. It, it, so we don't know what will happen. I remember there was a. Um, do you remember Viz magazine or Viz comic? They had oh, a thing yeah. on there and they they were suggesting this is back in the early 90s that you know the way music is at the time we didn't even have online downloading of music. We had CDs were about the most cutting edge technology and they were predicting that music would eventually be available in drinks that you would drink something and you would hear the music. But you know it's not as far fetched as what we've got now. With audio yeah. books, is it as downloading it into your phone? You know, it's just, um, yeah. it's just mad. So hopefully they do carry on, and uh, and, and this is a good one. So what's next for you? We've got the next book we're doing, and what else is going on? How are you fitting all everything into the building and stuff? All this building game that you have got as a sideline. 
Oh, um, well, I, I, I'll put it on, I'll put it on Facebook the other day uh, that uh, I've been doing stuff for me, for my daughter back here, doing for my other daughter, doing some driving, doing some plastering. Do, I said, it's hard, it's hard work this retirement, Mark. I'm thinking about <laughs> going to get a job again, just to have a rest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you keep banging out the books and I hope you keep choosing me to narrate them because they're so much fun. Uh, Glyn Davis, thank you very, very much. And the book is called Grumps. All the details, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you go into the comments, well, not the comments, the description there, there's the link there to download it from Amazon and look out for more by Glyn. This one, you'll love it. It's called Grumps. <laughs>